Well, good evening. Welcome to Community Baptist Church. Why don't you all do this? Stand with me if you would. And uh, trust the Lord has given you a good week. Brought you here tonight. Look forward to what God's going to do. And uh, let's sing this chorus out. Let's do it two times through. I think you guys look like you got the energy to do it, all right? Let's sing it out. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns a cattle.
Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Jason. What a blessing to think about the Lord's grace. Amen. What's one blessing that you have today that you want to share? Someone? Else? Yes, ma'am. Laura? Her arm is doing better. Laura injured. What's that? She appreciates all the prayers. She said that she injured her arm and, her, and she's doing better. That's an answer prayer. Brother James? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Mr. Elijah? For, for my dad to get better. He has a prayer request for his dad to get better. Amen. His dad's got uh, just a, a first question everybody asks anymore. Not did you hurt your arm and, and, and not are you born again, but do you have COVID? Pastor Joe does not have COVID. All right. So relax. All right. And he's just uh, dealing with a uh, some kind of a virus that the physicians gave him an antibiotic for his throat and supposed to take 24 to 36 hours and rest and take the antibiotic and then go see ears, nose, and throat specialists. All right, so that's, that's the latest of Pastor Joe. All right, and Stephen, you want to go back there and turn that, that uh, dehumidifier off of Papa. All right, thank you. Yes, someone else? Yes, ma'am, Pearl. Amen. That's a blessing. Say amen. That's a blessing. Someone else? To testimony. Yes, Mrs. Witten. Thank you for the promise of heaven. Thank you for the promise of heaven. Amen. It's probably all closer with uh, your grandma being closer to be in heaven. And, um, but, you know, I share this with folks all the time. And I'm in rest homes. I was in a rest home today. Did my fourth COVID test in eight days. All right, because every time I go into one of those places, they, they want to test me to make sure that I'm not bringing them something. And uh, I said, can you, sh can you, I even take pictures of it. Can you go with the one? No, we can't go with the one at the other place. We have to go with a new one. But anyways, I always share with folks, when I am the nurses and other folks, you've got the greatest job in the world. You get to see folks, the last people to see folks before they get to heaven. We all get so comfortable here that we forget this is just as Benjamin Franklin said, our embryo state, amen? We're moving towards the permanent state, amen? And what a blessing that is. <laughs> Nothing here holding me back, amen? Yes, sir, brother, Mark? I've been kept uh, safe from dogs so far. <laughs> kept safe from dogs, amen? Amen, and that's from your U.S. Post Office, all right? And he's uh, delivering uh, mail and packages in seven days a week and been uh, safe from them, so that's a blessing. All right, someone else. Yep, Judy. I think we should all be blessed for the wonderful turnout we had yesterday for the uh, food bank. So we had a mobile food pantry here. We often, I mentioned this to Pastor Joe, we don't do a good enough job telling folks about what we did yesterday and last week. We're always looking towards the next thing, and we need to kind of reflect on that. We had several workers here in our church helping Judy and uh, get out food. Amen and get out prayers. I prayed with at least 50 people uh, as they were coming through the lines, and, um, and we'd always ask for prayer, and Dick Wagner must have distributed 25 or 30 gospel tracts to people, uh, and we gave out food for at least, I'm told, over 150 families, and uh, 11,000 pounds of food. Where's Caleb at? Can you stand up? Yeah, see, he's still okay. I, he lifted all 11,000 pounds. He's okay. Well, part of it, right? He was part of it. He did, he did lots of different parts, and a lot of other people did, too. Thankful for everyone who helped. The cars were lining up. I told, uh, someone asked me, when did they start coming? It was the first car was 1035, and the food delivery started at 2 o'clock. All right, 2 10.35, and then I had calls, my first call was 7.30 in the morning uh, for folks wondering, even though it's online and it's on our website and there's just a lot of need. And then we've already had calls today for food tomorrow that uh, your associate pastor's wife will be helping me go and deliver. We'll be picking up 3,500 pounds of food and distributing that to some people that we typically distribute to. All right. Brother Dick, you have a prayer request or praise? Well, we not only ought to be faithful, 
for the good things that happened to us, but be thankful for all these bad things like Ukraine over there, just throwing bombs and shooting at them all, busting up their uh, city. Uh, we want to be thankful we don't we aren't that mess. Yes, sir. We're yes. very fortunate we haven't had that happen. That's before. right. Not, not since the Civil War has been, have been people been coming into people's, although I read a wonderful article by uh, uh, a uh, minister uh, who's involved in creationism that explains why the mob mentality is taking over America. So we're not that far away from what you're seeing in Ukraine. And I'm, I'm doing a little rewrite on it and I'll probably have it published pretty quick here. But his perspective is what we're seeing these mobs do against these senators, against these judicial, you know, the judges, and what they've done to our monuments is nothing different than what they did to Apostle Paul. Remember Apostle Paul had mobs attack him. Jesus had a mob attack him. And... Uh, you remember what happened to Andrew when the mob attacked him? And um, so I do believe that we're seeing that anarchy uh, coming our way in time uh, as we're getting closer to the return of Christ. But certainly we've, we've certainly have been able to live a peaceable life. Amen? It's a blessing. But I, we have a Christian attorney that advises our church. Uh, he hasn't been here, but we've uh, taken his counsel on matters. So it's not unusual lately for churches a little larger than our church to have people come into the church and upset the church service on purpose uh, just to cause disarray. And, and, and it happened to a church not far from us where people came and they threw things and yelled and had signs and, and screamed out things during the church service. So we are used to having a peaceable life aren't we? And we ask God to build a hedge of protection around us. What a blessing that Dee and Judy and Rosie and so many others were able to, Kyla, were able to hand out food yesterday without being accosted by people. And I had nothing but people saying thank you. All right? And after we left and gave away the over 11,000 pounds of food, three more cars came for food. Uh, so we, they started early and they came afterwards. And I'm told uh, by the way that the inflation is going that we're going to see more of that uh, with people needing food because they're making choices. Food, prescriptions. <coughs> food, car payments. Food, mortgage payments. So let's pray for God to give us wisdom and all of us to be wise. And then try to follow the practice of the church. I'm so grateful for our leaders and our helpers in our church where we've paid off everything and we're saving for the future so that we're not living in bondage and then uh, we can be ready to help others amen in the difficult times that could come someone else have a praise or a prayer request yes sir brother jeff and then uh, miss patty coming in on the bus this past two weeks um and pastor joe hasn't been able to sing obviously so he's left it over to me for a devotion to the Lord has used me from all the way from Potterville, all the way here. Amen. Um, he's he's um, being able to give a devotion through me. Amen. So it's, uh, it's an amazing thing because I've been doing it for a while. And I usually, you know, <laughs> half a minute or so, you know, the Lord uses me. But to be able to see youth even as answer, April's answered a lot of the questions from last week Amen. to this week and be able to understand it. Um, it's very, it's very cool, and that's on a lighter note. Uh, it's very Thank cool you. to see the, the Lord at, at work. Amen. That's a blessing. That's why we're giving out the food. Amen. Yeah. That's why we're having the prayer because we want to help people. But yes, there are difficulties going about. Thank God, that's the future of our country. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm thankful for all being able to help those ladies at the new ministers. Ninety, she's a blessing, and you know she has her days sometimes. So quite a few good ones. And um, well, she told me one time not too long ago that she doesn't know what she'd do without me. She'd probably die. She said, and, "I mean, we all do eventually, of course, but that was touching." 
and I got to help a friend of hers the other day that's 91 do a little cleaning and stuff. And it's just, um, I enjoy doing things like that. Okay. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to be serving other people. Amen. All right, well, we have some prayer lists, and they're posted here for you. And if you didn't hear the email or didn't get the chance to see, to see the email, uh, Dr. Ann Livingston was getting up on a, on a small ladder and, and fell and broke her ankle, and, and they're doing surgery. That happened this morning, and they're doing surgery on her today, right now. So pray for her and her sister, who is one of our members here in our church, told me that there'd probably be some plates and there was a bone sticking out, so you want to pray for God to help her. Uh, pray for Tony. I saw Tony today at lunchtime. And he's now been diagnosed, he's under hospice, but he's also been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, so was, uh, pray for Tony Sanchez, Anthony is his full name. And pray for Laura, as we mentioned, Soup Brown, recovery from her wrist, Joyce Leflair, uh, Brody Smith, brain tumor, um, uh, Jody, that's the uh, niece of Mr. and Mrs. Brent Newman and Jeremy uh, with cancer, and Jody is under hospice. Uh, Ronan, Peterson's Health, uh, Jerry, Janet's sister, heart valve replacement, Janet's daughter, rather. Uh, our country, laborers for the Christ, sick and shut ins, unspoken requests, and van for food pantry and transportation. All the food yesterday was all paid for before we gave it out. Amen? Amen. All the food was paid for. And thank the Lord uh, for that. All the workers did it for free. It was all volunteer staff. And uh, impressive that the one man unloaded 11,000 pounds of food uh, for us in just 15 minutes, you know, so we could give that out over the next two and a half hours or two hours and a quarter. So thank you for everyone. Pray for God to help our church this Sunday. We are getting ready for the services this Sunday. And we'd ask you to be a part of that. It'd be a 945. 11 and at 6 o'clock. Pray for God to help all the campers that will be going and visiting. As Pastor Joe uh, gets better with his health. We're going to go and visit each one of those families, get all the things secured, give them their checklists. And there are 27 that are registered to go. We already had Dee go with her two grandchildren, so we 30 campers this summertime is our plan. And we also have some other volunteers that are going to be going up. So if you're interested in serving in some capacity, if not this summer, in the fall or in the winter, certainly let us know. We'll get you connected with the uh, workers list. So this time, all the boys and girls that are right up inside of here, we'll take half of the boys and girls will be with, um, with Miss Marty, all right? And then the other half, you, you three uh, young people right here, go right over there with Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Witten, all right? So you three go right over there, all right? And you four stay right here with Miss Marty, all right? And then uh, all these young people, if you'll come over here with Mr. and Mrs. You come right over here with Mr. and Mrs. Jason Barkley, all right? Young people, go right over here by Mr. and Mrs. Barkley. And then everyone else, we need you to get up, move out of your seat, and go to somebody and pray with them, all right? Go find someone to pray with them, all right? Let's go, all right? It'll be a blessing to you. Stay right there. Pray with these guys. Right there. Thank you so much for praying.
say, Lord, may you be with them. They are future and they are those who must be in the depths of our lives that we can grow up. For I know you must be the good of those who are appreciated. We thank you that the need is come. We pray together and pray to the Lord that he is a blessing to me, Lord, that he shows up in our lives. Father, as we continue in prayer, we just thank you for each person that came out tonight and those watching online. We do ask you, dear God, that you, that you touch our associate pastor's health. We're so grateful for how much he does and ask you to meet his needs, his physical needs at this time. We do also ask you, Father, to uh, meet the needs of Dr. Ann as she's under the surgeon's care and the healing. And we think of Souk with her surgery she had on her wrist and all these other needs that have been met and the other needs that have been requested and the praises tonight, as Jeff said, the opportunity to minister to young people uh, and, and Brother Jason come and minister by leading music, driving the bus, uh, uh, helping as a treasurer, as deacon, Brother Dave setting everything up in the technical and uh, greeting people and uh, his wife being able to serve others, 90, 91 years of age. There's so many people doing so many things to help others. We're thankful for that. And our way of showing the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. And then to invite them to come to know Christ. Over uh, several, uh, uh, several scores of people that came through yesterday. Uh, we were told over 150 that were families that were ministered to with the 11,000 pounds of food. And all the workers, uh, I counted, uh, I think, more than a dozen workers that were here to serve them. And thank you for giving us safety with the cars and the trucks and all the machinery that was there. And no injuries, and as far as I know, no injuries of lifting. And, and lots of people satisfied and encouraged and food given out and a safe temperature and, and good care. And thank you for everyone helping with that. We know how important that is. We know it meets a physical need, which allows us then to be able to give out a spiritual impact. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll ask all the young people to go out at this time with Miss Marty. All the young people, we do remind you, we have a friendly teen class on Sunday. We have a Daniel class every Sunday morning uh, for the 8 through the 12-year-olds. Brand new Genesis class for 4 to 7-year-olds. So we invite you to invite others to come and be a part of those special classes. And uh, I just think it's such an asset to be able to have those. The Women of Grace class, where my daughter-in-law teaches all the ladies and, uh, that, that want to go inside of there, and then I teach couples or individuals an adult believers class. We're going through Nehemiah, and they're going through a part in Philippians. 
So we wanted to share those opportunities with you and uh, ask you to pray for those opportunities and ask for God to have his way with each of those classes that the teachers will be able to visit the young people and, their, and, the, and the parents and the adults and that the young people will come. And, uh, you know, many of us went to public schools. I've mentioned one of the teachers. Guess what? <laughs> I used to have 100% citizenship, seriously. I, I wanted to be in school, you know what I'm saying? Well, you're going to sit at home, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, but that's not the same thing for church. It's an option for church. And many of the families don't get their families up. So we're trying to build that continuity with the young people. I still love being in church. I get a privilege of coming. It's not the building, it's the people, amen? And so I invite you to help us to build that network. But I thought this was a great statement. Someone said something to Pastor Joe, and he was rehearsing it back to me. And they said, yeah, we were in our church, and, and the youth group just wasn't growing. And, uh, you know, and I'm all prepared and just not. And he said, you know what I say? He said, what I say is the best worker for our young people in our church. And then he pointed out a lady that was standing there, Judy, he said. He said, because Judy's our best worker. And she was looking at and he said, and, and along with Judy, then there's my wife. She's our best worker. And then along with my wife, there's Dee. She's our best worker. Because it takes all these different people uh, loving those young people, praying for those young people, visiting those young people. I told uh, our, our newest Sunday school teacher, uh, Cammie, I've been working to try to build her class. Her class is only one week old. But I've invited my neighbor kids to come to her class. And you know what? You probably know someone that could benefit from Cammie and Ruth ministering to them as the assistant and Cammie teaching them. And I did the same thing with James. I visited James's class last Saturday, all right? I didn't catch anybody home, but I visited there and I left a flyer in the door. And so when they come home, and someone did come home, and they called me, and they said, oh, yeah, we're not gonna be able to come out this week, but thanks for coming by, you know? And so that's what it takes. And so all of us keep working towards that end and um, I know that that makes a difference. I know that Judy and, um, and uh, Janice went and visited Isabel. You know, that came from our camp and our craft vacation Bible school. I know Jason went and, and visited one of the young people. Not all of them that come to our church necessarily will come every Sunday, but we're going to minister to them as often as we can. Sometimes folks have to work. Sometimes folks are living at different places. One weekend they live here, one weekend they lived in East Lansing. You know, so uh, that's, that's where it is. Upcoming events we'd ask you to pray for. The Senior and Friends Missionary Luncheon. It's at 11.30, it be under the pavilion. That's quite a difference, because last time we met at the Cracker Barrel, it was difficult for some folks to hear because of the busyness that was in there. I get it. So we're going to try to do it under the pavilion. It may be windy. It may be rainy, but we'll, we can adjust. If we have to, we can move in the building. And then we'll vote on where we'll go the next time. We're just trying to find the ideal spot, all right, and uh, try to minister to folks and be a help. The 23rd is the Helping Kids Charity Golf Outing. We have 14 teams signed up, which is a blessing. But we could use some more teams. So if you know of a golfer that would like to come, let me know about them, and I will personally invite them out. We also could use some more sponsors. Obviously, uh, these things change from year to year on whole sponsors and what have you. But if you could come, I know Doug Brown said he's going to come and just help out for a couple hours. If you could come, if you'll let me know, or, uh, or uh, you can uh, send a text to Pastor Joe and let him know. And then we'll certainly put you on a list of people, everything from just spot, you know, sitting at a hole, handing out bottles of water, uh, greeting people when they come in. Uh, watching the prize table. There's just three outings going on that morning. And so it's, it's very much a bees hive, you know, lots of activity going on there. I don't golf. Neither do I, all right? A lot of us aren't golfers. A lot of us are hackers, all right? I'm the best thing for the irrigation of any good golf course, all right? But I've done a lot of it, all right? I've been doing it since I was 22 or 23 when I went on staff with my brother Doug. Uh, so when I first picked up a club, he said, well, you're going to learn to golf. You're going to be on, on our staff. And so, uh, but you know what? Uh, it's, it can be a good, fun fellowship. And it's a scramble format. That's the problem a lot of folks don't understand. A scramble format means 
If you can't even hit, you could probably putt. Anybody ever here play goofy golf or, you know, uh, that kind of where you just have to putt it? Then you could probably be a great asset to your team as a putter. Or one of the most important things, if they're serious athletes, is you could be the comic relief, all right? When you go up there and try to swing away and miss it, we would all have something to laugh at, all right? Yeah, behind your back. We would laugh behind your back. And then the camp, the summer camp for the teens and the junior agers, pretty convenient. We do it all at once. But, you know, tonight, uh, tonight once again, shared, showed me another thing that we need. We've been saving, and we have over $20,000 saved for a van. But every time that I find a van for $20,000, a 15-passenger van with the sway bars, with the three-quarter ton, um, with less than 100,000 miles, it's $40,000. So I'm asking God, and I'd ask you to join with me to pray that God would help us to find a reasonable, good condition van. We don't want to buy something we're going to be dumping money in the next week, you know what I'm saying? And you can do that. And I have friends that have bought some with 200,000 miles. Well, when it gets around 200,000, you start nickel diming you, you know, and you need air conditioning, three quarter ton or one ton, you know, and all those different features. And then we could uh, be able to use that for when we have smaller pickups, uh, which you do sometimes in the summer and also on the Sunday route. What a blessing on Sunday that were nine that came in on the route, amen? Uh, and of course you got workers and young people and riders, but we're still trying to make that difference. Thank you for everyone praying towards that end. Now, and starting very soon, we're gonna be doing some things that Pastor Joe mentioned to the choir, a beautiful bell choir. And we know that Dr. Ann, before she had broke her ankle, was able to pick up the bells that the church, uh, one of our generous members, uh, uh, philanthropists donated so that we have all the money all paid for, you know, and I was told over $10,000 bells all paid for going to be brought in here. And maybe you're interested in maybe learning that. And so there's a sign-up sheet back by the water fountain, and it could be something you could, it doesn't mean if you sign it that you're committed for life, but uh, it could be a help, and there's going to be a young people and an adult. All right, so there'll be two different ones, and, and it will require an hour a month of practice, but it could be a real asset to you. I was mentioning this to my younger brother, Dan, and he played at uh, Maranatha Baptist College in the, in the handbells and said it was very, very useful and helpful and encouraging uh, to him to have that connection because you get, you get to learn other people and you get to have that fellowship, and um, it can be a real blessing. Well, this evening... I'm going to take the next uh, few minutes uh, together and share with you from the Word of God. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. I started a series at the beginning of the summer of at least I found 10 spiritual impacts, 10 spiritual passages, 10 passages that you'd want to have in your pocket if you were left on a you know, remote island. You know what I'm saying? If you could only have 10 passages on a three by five card, what would they be? Uh, you know, 10 themes to help encourage you. And so, or to lift up others, to be a help. And tonight we're gonna to look at one of those that I think could be a help. And I'm sure you would probably, if we had, you know, 25, 30 people uh, picking, you may come up with a different list. But here are some that I would recommend that you consider. Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Would you read that for us, Brother Rick? For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And then he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Alexander Slosithin was a Russian writer, and he resisted the rise of the communists in the Soviet Union. He was imprisoned, and he was sentenced in the life in the gulag shortly before his relief from prison. The Soviet Union's forced labor camp wasn't something that they wanted the public to know about. This is a picture of him with now the leader of the new Russia. In 1970, some of the writings 
that he made of the memoirs of what he went through were published. When they were published, he received the Nobel Prize for literature because he was bold enough to expose what was going on in communist Russia. It is, rec it is recorded that Alexander came to personal faith in Jesus Christ while he was in the Gulag. And his love for Jesus Christ was the hope, was the strength, was the help that he needed in helpless times when he was being punished, when he was being starved, when he was being worked to death. At one point, Alexander wanted to die because of the brutal beatings that the Soviet Union guards would put on him. If he did not work, he realized that the guards would beat him to death. So he had to make a decision. Will I not work so then they'll beat me to death or will I continue to work? As he was pondering that option, one of the people who was also a believer, stronger believer than he, saw that he was losing faith, losing his love. Can you think about that? And guess what? He made him a little wooden cross and gave it to him. That cross changed everything. You weren't allowed to have anything personal, but he was able to hide and conceal that cross. And that cross showed the love of Christ for that other Christian and that love of Christ, that Christ died for Alexander. If you realize that the strength that's available through the love of Jesus Christ, it could change your outlook on your circumstance. All right, I ask the whole congregation to please stand if you've had any problems since you've been born again. Would you please stand if you've had any problems since you've been born again? May it go on record to say it's unanimous, except for the head uh, uh, deacon back in the back inside of there, all right? But he's running the sound booth, so he can't stand up. All right, you all may be seated. Love is one of the purest and greatest motivators of all of life. When you love someone, you are highly motivated to express that love. Amen. When you know someone loves you, you are highly motivated to honor that love. I felt that quote was so well said by Paul Chapel that I was just going to quote it as I read it. The truth of the matter is that human love will let you down because humans are prone to fail. No matter how good of a person you are, no matter how good of a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter or a child you are, your love will fall short of what the people around you need. But the love of Christ is the utopia. Jesus Christ's love is the utopia. And the problem with most Christians is that we get our eyes off of Jesus Christ. We got hold of that Christianity, amen. We took the love of God, amen. And then something happens. Life happens. And when life happens, like, like the, when I was in the rest home, one of the rest homes this week, the person said, well, this happened to me and this happened to me. And I, I was there to try to encourage them in the word. And to be honest with you, the more that they talked, the more heavy it was, the more difficult it was, challenging it was. And then finally I looked at them and said, listen, I'm not a physician. My expertise is not in medical well-being. And I've heard hundreds, honestly, thousands of stories of people going through great difficulties. I gotta let you know, it's difficult to hear these over and over and over again. I'd much rather dig a ditch. Seriously. There's something neat. When you get done digging the ditch, it's done. All right? But when you leave someone 
when they have infections or their skin is open and it won't heal or the doctors have no answers, they throw their hands up in the air and they're suffering. Or none of those physical matters. It's an emotional matter. They were, they were discouraged because of something that someone did or someone didn't do or they don't have the someone in their life that they want or they have someone in their life they don't want. Then what do you do? Well, I think I have the answer for you. You have to remember that there are examples in the scripture, at least three examples in the scripture. First of all, the church at Ephesus, it left its first love. Do you remember that passage? Would you share that passage with us, Brother Mark? Revelation 2, 1 through 5. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? He's saying, say if he, now hold it, the seven stars in his right hand, who walk into the midst of the seven golden candles. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not faithed. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the, the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will move thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. Left thy first love. One of the negative impacts on a believer is leaving the first love of the Lord. How many have met a Christian who's left their first love? They've left their love of Jesus. And if you meet them, during that time, it's not a good testimony for Christ. You know, I've never met a Christian who hasn't left their first love of Jesus Christ. I never have met one. There's always a time that there's an umbrella that comes over that first love. And it shades it. And the people can't see Jesus. They only see you. You may not even think that you're doing it. But it's not what you think, it's what they perceive. How many have noticed that? I don't know how many times I have people come up to me and they share with me what they saw me do. Josh, they saw me do something, but it's not what I meant. See what I'm saying? But it's how they observe me doing it. Well, you get it, you're a teacher, you get it, right? So that's not at all what I was saying, but my body language or how I said it, you know, I'm a loud mouth, you know what? And I say things of, well, you are upset. I have my grandchildren one day say, well, I'm just so glad you're not upset. I said, I never was upset. I was sharing with you an urgency. If you do that, that mousetrap will snap your finger. I love you. If I would just say, oh, well, be careful. Don't put your finger in that mousetrap. No, don't put your finger in that mousetrap. There's some urgency about it, I'm saying. Like we were riding our bikes. I said, when we come up to this part, it doesn't matter what the sign says. That sign can say, all day walk. You do not walk. They're looking at me. The, the sign says walk. Those drivers have no clue that you're here. No clue. They're listening to the radio. Some of them are talking on their phone. So they, some of them have got so much drugs, and some of them are so hurried to get to work, and they got their coffee between their legs, and they're eating a sandwich with their mouth. They said, it doesn't matter what the sign says, and it doesn't matter if you're on the right. A one-ton vehicle a one-ton vehicle will crush you, and I will not be able to stop it. I love you too much for this to happen. You remember, everybody out there, they are not for you. They are for themselves. It's a terrible way to look at it, Pastor. That's the survival way to look at it if you've ever driven bike. And I've driven bike for years and never been run over because I look at all you driving your cars as missiles coming after me, all right? It's a video game, and it's live, all right? All right? And it's live, especially when you're dealing with Lansing residents. All right? Seriously. All right? I don't know how many times the, the sign says that you to walk and they just drive right on through. And then maybe at the last minute they slam on the brake. Well, that doesn't count when they're running over your, you know, I have a $1,000 bike that one of our members uh, sold me for $200. A $1,000 bike doesn't stop a, you know, a 15, uh, you know, a one-ton vehicle. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't do it. All right? So what's the answer? 
$1,000 bike's probably a piece of junk today, but back then it, was, it seemed like it was a really good bike. <laughs> so what's the answer? The answer is what people's perception is. And you may be sitting here today, and I may have greatly offended you, and I want to let you know if you knew my heart, that's not my intent. But I do believe that preaching God's word is convicting. And if you sat here week after week and not been convicted, that's on me. Because certainly I need to be so in tune with the Lord that I know what my people's needs are and share that with them. And then it's up to you whether or not you respond. I can set the table all day long. And many of you, we've eaten together. I set the table. It's up to you if you have an appetite for it. Amen? I can't make it so that you do any more. The love of Christ can be left. I'm convinced that many Christians took Jesus at the altar of sacrifice and they came to him and they got him and then they went right back living the way they always were. And you know why? Not because the Holy Spirit didn't want to have that liberty, but because they had a bent. And their bent was not that they left salvation. You know, you can be saved and not be a good Christian. That's why I asked you earlier how many have met someone who left their first love. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Salvation is not performance-based. Jesus died and paid for you. But your salvation can be miserable, and you'll be miserable if you don't let Jesus have his way in your life. I've been there. It's not fun. So what's the answer? Have what God would want for you. Some of the most upset and angry people I've met have been people in the ministry. In the ministry. Out of the will of God. So what's the answer? Get in the will of God. Get back under the blessing spout. You can be doing all the right things, but not having the relationship with God like you want. And then you don't enjoy your Christianity. And by the way, nobody else enjoys your Christianity. They don't enjoy it because you're not enjoying it. It's miserable to you and them too. How many met someone at work that do not want to be there, right? And they make everybody around them upset because they do not want to be there. They do not want to be a part of it. I don't know how many teams I played on all the time that I was growing up in public school that had players that thought they were better than the rest of us or that um, they didn't want to make it to the practices or whatever, whatever, right? And guess what? They didn't help the team. All right, so what's the answer? The answer is for us to realize that the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. That's on purpose, I believe, that order. This is not the same thing as growing weary. Everybody grows weary. How many have ever been tired since you've been a Christian? All of us have been, all right? And I know as time goes on, you get more tired because that's just natural. That doesn't mean you're a bad Christian that you're tired, that you don't get the same thing out of your Bible reading. You need to change your, your format. Oftentimes when I read my Bible, I read walking. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Well, then you just keep falling asleep in your Bible, all right? When you wake up with a drool all over the Bible, you explain that to, to St. John while you're spitting all over him again, all right? But if you had your Bible open, all right, and sometimes I listen to it while I'm doing it. I put an ear pod in, I listen to it, and I'm reading it. Because if I sit down, because I'm in motion quite often during the day, I'll go to sleep. All right, I'll doze off. All right, I don't need a medication. I don't need Simonex, all right? All right? So what's the answer? The answer is uh, engage. This is not the same thing as growing weary. It's not the same thing as being distracted because your body needs rest or you need nutrition or you need hydration. All right? What we're talking about is you, like the church at Ephesus, you get distracted with other things. God's goals aren't your goals anymore. How many have been on a team at, at work and, and somebody has a different goal and the boss keeps trying to bring it up? I work for Publix Marcus. They used to have a little phrase every year that they'd come up with. And one phrase, they'd have a, one year it was a phrase. I still remember it, all right? And this was back in 1979. You want to know what it was? Don't pass it up, pick it up. What were they talking about, Eddie? You've been in custodial years for a long time. We're employees. That's not my job to sweep the floor, right? But guess what? It is my job. Because I can't serve anybody, right? Even though I had a, a professional janitorial that came in or professional maintenance people that came in, I can't serve someone if they just slipped on a banana peel or on an olive or in someone's spilled cup of coffee. Don't pass it up. That was our whole phrase for the whole year. You could have eaten off those floors on 
Sunday mornings when we stayed up late Saturday nights polishing those floors. And Sunday mornings with that clean, it used to not be open on Sundays. And then it'd be open back up on Monday. You could see your face on the floors. That's how clean they were. And, it was a, and, that, and that place was always higher priced than Winn-Dixie and Pantry Pride. Publix were. But people went there because their phrase, shopping, was a pleasure. Where shopping is a pleasure. Because they were trying to make it temperature-wise, clean-wise. You don't mind paying a little bit extra if you realize that there's not going to be kids slobber all over your hand cart. You know what I'm saying? Because as soon as a kid used it, they cleaned it up. You know what I'm saying? As soon as someone used the bathrooms, someone was assigned every 15 minutes to go and check the bathrooms. All right? That's what they did. So what were they trying to do? They were trying to get in love of a loyalty for the customer so that we would have a job. All right? And that's what we as believers need to realize that Paul the Apostle wrote that Alexander the coppersmith was born again, but he left his love. Was that the same thing as Mark, surnamed John? I don't know, perhaps. Remember, he got afraid. There's a lot of reasons why people lose their first love. Remember, Paul was with Barnabas, and John, whose name was Mark, was with them, not the same John that wrote Gospel John. All right, They believe it was the same Mark that wrote the book of Mark. He was the penman who took the information down. All right, But anyways, if you read the story, they all left their love for Jesus. When love is not practice, division happens. When love is put in place, people can become jealous of your love. How many have children or friends, and if you give attention to one friend, then the other friend feels left out? Why? Because it does that. You can't be everywhere. But mature love says, I get it. I can't be everywhere, so I'll give them a little birth, a wide birth, and then they'll love, they love me too. I'm secure in my love. What is the answer? Show the love of Christ even if people get upset because you're showing the love of Christ to someone else. Because you want to share the love of Christ to them too, but you can't be everywhere. But the love of Christ can grow that maturity. Secondly, the love of Christ can be restored. That's the blessing. The love of Christ can be left like it was in the Ephesus church. Maybe you're teaching a class or singing in the choir or serving the Lord around here. And, That's it. I've had it. I'm not loved around here. No one appreciates me. Mm. So I'm doing it so I get recognition? Or am I doing it because I love my Lord and Savior? If you're doing it for recognition, it won't last. It never does. Guess what lasts when you do things to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant from the Lord? If anybody along the way sees that you've done something good, that's a bonus, amen? You know why I go to work every day? Well, that's what your job is. Well, God tells us that we're to work or worth, we're, we're worse than infidels. If you get recognized at your work, if you get a raise, if it's good work environment, praise God. But if not, you still have to work. You get to choose what you want to do to work. But that is the purpose of mankind, to honor and glorify God. Now, life can be better if you'll let people in. How many have let someone in your life? If you let someone come into your life, life can be better. It's not comfortable to let someone in. But if you let someone in, they'll share the word with you. They'll read the word with you. They'll interact with you. They'll invite you to do what you need to do. And then you'll quit drifting. Or if you start drifting, they say, hello. You're drifting. Come back. The love of Jesus Christ is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. And the Bible says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. The love of Jesus Christ is what you need to fulfill your life. Unfortunately, <clears throat> most of us didn't get this. And when we came into salvation, we were thinking there's something else. There's a trailer or something. No, the love of Jesus Christ satisfies all those matters. Now, if Jesus Christ's love is in someone else that you love, then that's a bonus. If Jesus Christ's love is in someone else 
that you're around, that's a bonus. But he may not be. How many have met Christians who do not have saved friends or saved loved ones? So guess what? You could be that one that could reach out to them. And sometimes it's not on their desire to be in that spot. I was with a resident of a care center who had difficulty. The nurse came in and started ministering. Didn't even know them. Was not a relative to them. It was their job. It was so beautiful. They took a little cloth and they just wiped their brow. They gave him a sip of water. You would have thought that water was, you know, shipped in from, you know, but St. Augustine, you know, has living water or something in it. But we drink it. We just drink it. This just so. I got to tell you, I haven't enjoyed water like I watched them drink that water. You know what I'm saying? And I thought to myself, wow, these little things that we take for granted, don't we? So what's the answer? Realize with me, her love made a difference to someone who was failing in health. That love of Jesus Christ can help with that next step. Well, we'll stop at this point, but before we do, let me ask you a couple questions. The love of Christ can be left, not in salvation. What is an indicator that the love of Christ is left in someone's life? Either you've experienced or something that uh, you've uh, counseled with someone. What's something that can be done in that matter? Anyone? You've experienced this or you've been around someone on their response to it? Maybe I didn't rephrase that well. If you see someone leave that love of Christ, what can you do to bring them back home? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Show them love. Show them the love of Christ, which is better than our love. Because if you know how to love, you get that from Christ, right? But what if someone's been broken? Like, I have family who've been broken. They were raised in families that were in addictions. They've been raised in, they were not treated why, the right way, right? So then that is a special love that's needed to help blend that and mend that. So you have to weigh and ask for God's wisdom with that. Relationships aren't just instant. Some folks, it seems it comes easy and they're jovial and go on. But sometimes that positioning is all part of the game. But inside, they're screaming out for help. But the Christ can make that difference. Amen? And no human relationship can make that. Folks, look for human relationships. That's why you see four and five and six marriages broken and, re, you know, because they're, they're trying to find something that's not there. All right? The love of Christ can be restored. What are the things that you've seen that have been a help to help someone get that love relationship with Christ back? Anyone? Yes, sir? Prayer. Prayer. Amen. Praying with them or just praying for them? Praying for them. Praying for them. Someone else? Yes, ma'am? Pray with them. Making time, amen? We are just talking about that. My daughter-in-law pointed this out on Sunday. And we have these lists back here of all these shut-in. And really, these shut-in are people who just need cards, phone calls, personal visits, all the things that Cammie just talked about. And guess what? That can be an encouragement to them. May not make any difference to them. Like one of the residents I went and visited today, it was half asleep most of the time. The nurses, the family who check in on it, you know, during that time and after that time, it, I'm ministering to them too. See what I'm saying? It takes hours of work to visit one person. The preparation to go there, the visit, the leaving of there, go to the next one. And no one can do it all. Amen? And certainly their families can't do it. But you could be a part of that. One time Mark was with me, was with me and we went in a couple times. We went and visited some senior citizens and they called me up and they still talk about that nice young man who was in the military. I said, well, you don't really know him, all right, but I know him. <laughs> but we shared a burger with him, right? We had some fun. A couple of them. It's a blessing. It was best for us, too. We, we gleaned much from that, from two 90-year-olders, all right? We, we gleaned different times. And you can, too, all right? It doesn't take a lot to be a blessing. I did get some prayer requests that I promised that we'd share. A.C. Flag asked for general prayer. Jennifer asked for prayer for anxiety, and Jim Thomas asked for prayer for Alzheimer's. 
So let's go to the prayer with these ones even now. All right, would you join with me? Brother Eddie, would you lead us? A.C. Flagg, Jennifer, and Jim Thomas. If I can be a help with you about this message, feel free to seek me out. I'll be around here at the service. Don't forget to pray for Dr. Ann and her surgery that's happening. Don't forget to pray for, uh, for Souk, that's Doug Brown's wife who had the surgery last week. And then also for Pastor Joe, who's treated today uh, for the throat infection. It was not COVID. And he is doing uh, better just knowing that he has a plan with the antibiotic for the next few hours and uh, be able to get some rest and then probably be back uh, serving uh, on this uh, coming Sunday. That would be the plan. And then if you can help uh, on this Sunday uh, in serving, we would love to have a part with you. If you can help in visiting any of these seniors, you don't even have to get permission. The truth is they're all in their homes. You can go by and call them before you go, go by and visit them. A card is always welcome. A personal visit's fine. I would call before I come. They have certain hours that you have visitation. And if that's not uh, viable for you, some of them are not in rest homes. They are in uh, their own homes. And so you call and set that up, and that could be a help. Bring something by. I always try to bring something that their doctors would not want them to have. All right? <laughs> I bring them a cupcake or I bring them a brownie. I know Ruth Jackson always loved that. I'd just smuggle it in behind my back, and then I'd say, oh, I was her favorite. All right? And bring her a cupcake or a brownie. Or, and then I always bring some sugar-free candy, too. I made sure everyone saw that. And then I had a cupcake on there, underneath the blanket there. And uh, they just loved that. And it was a blessing to them. A cup of coffee. I don't know how many times. Uh, with Jerry Witt. I'd bring Jerry Witt a cup of coffee. And we'd just sit there and drink a cup of coffee and uh, pray together. And, um, yeah, he loved it. Just uh, that could be a simple thing. And he didn't want anything but the senior coffee, you know, so let's get the senior coffee over at McDonald's at 85 cents, and that, that's just a blessing to folks. Could be a help to them. Yes, sir, Brother Dick? We used to go visit him we take coffee and donuts. He loved donuts. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we went and visited him, uh, I think, the same day he passed away. I don't think it was on you. Right there. Yeah. No, yeah, it's going to happen. We're going to pass. All right, but let's pray for God to help with these different needs. And don't forget to pray for uh, Kyla and Cammie's grandma, who is actively dying, is what they uh, told us. And so ask for God to meet Gloria's uh, need in this time and her family's need. God bless you. You are dismissed.